Hello, good day, and welcome back. So this is part two in our implementation of the list program. And so today we're going to be adding more details into our long listing, but we're going to only do a permission placeholder, but we still have things like the file size and some space into adjust. We'll see. So we're going to start off by copying our code from yesterday and of course, using that and seeing exactly where we left off. And we could see for a short list and it works, but long list in, we don't really quite have anything. So it seems to me that one of the things we can do is just copy the code that we have for short list in, put it in our long list in function and at least start there. So if we do that, um, build our code and then we run it, of course, the long list is going to look exactly like the short list in. But then now we can start working on the files in a long list in. So what should that look like? Well, let's look at a real list in program and see what it looks like. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to cheat a little bit by pasting it in there, creating a string using the sprinter function. And then now when I rerun it, our long list in, at least in for files, shows the long list in for the file. So now we have to get rid of a few things because we're not going to be putting like the owner of the file, their group and so on, and the data was cre created. So we're going to instead um, just get the size and calculate and get the permission for the file. So that's going to be in our long listing. So our long listings would be actually a little bit shorter listing, but we're going to do that. And we're going to assume that we have these functions to calculate the size and size and get the permission as a string um, from the file info. Now, um, so let's write this file function. And so it's going to pass in the size that we're going to get from the FI object. And um, we're going to use that to calculate the size. At first, the, the size is in bytes. So really, we really just need to return is a string that is the number of bytes and with the unit on it to tell the user what, what units we are using. So in this case, it's just going to be B for bytes. And so for our permission thing, like I said, we're not, we're going to only do a place all the Android Studio in the third part, we're going to finally work through how to turn those permission num the permission number into the string that looks something like this. So for now, we're just going to put a placeholder. So let's build and rerun. And so now we should see our output with the size of the file. And there it is. A is a zero byte file. Main is 227, you know, basically 2K, 2.7K, but whatever. Um, and so there's some other things that we need to do. Um, we want to fix it so that for files in a directory, um, we can see long list in also. So for the function that does the directory listing, we should create one specific for our long list in directory. Instead of forcing the one function to handle both cases of short and long, I just like to copy that function. And so now here we can modify how it lists files. And so I'm going to go down to the directory itself and copy that information here and put it into this part that had the directory list the files for our directory list in. And now I have to move some things around. And basically, as I um, loop over the files in a directory, I still need to know what is a file and what is a directory. Because in the long listing, you haven't noticed it yet. But um, and we can test this is that you need to put a D for directory and a dash just represents a regular file. So instead of using the directory entry name function that we use for the short listing, I'm going to use the um, get dir function, which returns a slice of fi object, which is information about each object in a directory, which is a file or a directory. And so from that, I can get this, the name oh, and the size, not only the name of the thing, but also the size. And so I'm going to use this information now to get things like the, each directory name and each directory file size. Um, for the directory, I had a, on like three dashes there, but I can actually use um, the uh, file info to get the size of the directory. And there it is. You can see the directory file is 60H, which we've seen before. And so I can get rid of simplifying my code by refactoring it because we got some doing a file or directory. I still need to get the size. I still need to get a permission. I still need to get the name. So the only thing that's really different is that first character that I mentioned for a file is just a dash and for a directory it's a D. So I should just test that alone to say for this current FI object, is it a file or a directory? And other than that, get the same permission and get the size. And so there you go. And so I'm doing that there. 
and everything is looking decent in terms of listing out files and directories within directories. So we create a directory C within the directory B and it look, it's looking good. Now we want to turn our attention to see if we can do something about the units how we display size. Um, right now we just list in the bytes. But what we might want to do is to be able to say, well, if there are more than 1024 or 1024 bytes, it's one kilobyte. So basically I want to convert or divide how many, the size, number of bytes I have by 1024. And if that is greater than zero, then I know it's how I'm dealing, the units I'm dealing with is kilobyte. And of course I want to save that value. So I can do that. And of course I want to set it equals to zero, the string equals to K, the string, sorry, unit equals K, the string. And when I build and rerun this, this is looking good now. So we have main is three K. Well, when we look at it, it was more like 2,700 something kilobytes, but anyway. And so now we can continue along this line and now keep dividing S by 1024. And so now um, I can go from kilobytes to megabytes. But here the problem is I have this thing that says three kilobytes or one megabyte, but that is not exactly correct. And we know that because if we scroll up and look at how many bytes in the LS program, it's one point something megabytes, not just one megabyte. So we need to use floating point numbers for our calculation. So let's go back and change that from just an integer division to a floating point division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, um, the file size that's coming in as in 64, and I'm going to cast that to a float 64 value. Float 64 is way bigger than we need. I mean, float 2 would work fine too, but let's just be in the safe side. Maybe our program here is going to stick around for a long time and be used when file sizes are much, much bigger. So float 64 it is. And so I'm going to create this new variable S and of course I can't have use S as the value that's passed in. So I'm just use I because this is the only time I'm going to use it. And the math is still going to stay the same, except now if I run the code, because I'm checking to see if something is greater than zero and I'm doing a floating point division, something like 0 0.0001 is still going to be considered greater than zero. And so now you end up with something like this where you can still go and do a divide to try and figure out how many megabytes is in something that's actually a fraction of a megabyte. So what you want to do instead is not um, compare it to zero, but compare it to 1.0. And when you do that, now you get something very different than what uh, we had before and build and retest. And now you can see 3.3K or 1.7. Um, and that's because I use the point 0.2 there in the formatting to specify I only want to use at most two formatting um, thing. And then the five in front of six is just the um, amount of space to really use. We're going to learn more about that formatting specifiers um, in the next chapter, chapter 12, where we can cover the FMT package. But that's pretty much um, the gist of this. I mean, you could continue and calculate for gigabytes and then, of course, terabytes. Uh, we don't really have to go beyond terabytes, but that pretty much takes care of um, our size calculation. And so the only thing left is to turn the file mode into is the string. And we're going to do that in the very next video. Again, thanks for your time. Um, I hope you find this example, um, you know, interesting, um, not because of the different ways you can implement it, but the fact that you've gotten enough now that you can do something like this. You can write a program that you actually would use on your computer. Okay. Take care. See you in the next video. Thanks a million. Um, please subscribe. Please spread the word. Um, definitely subscribe. If you're listening to this and you have subscribed, please do and thumbs up the video. See you. Bye.